I'm here with a very special guest right now, Miss Eleanor Cliff, who is a contributing editor of Newsweek magazine. I have to say that uh, I first knew you as a guest on the McLaughlin Group. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's going back a ways, right? Yes, <laughs> yes. Right. Uh, I will not uh, shout at you that you're wrong. I no, promise no. that. Well, <laughs> well Newsweek is my real life, and I've got right. art notoriety, if you will, from the right. <laughs> From that television <laughs> show. Uh, wonderful day here in Detroit, yeah. or in Dearborn, uh, nearby Detroit, uh, celebrating a woman who has uh, real relevance now, even uh, even though it was so long ago that she did what she did. Right. Well, it was a long time ago, but you know, I was alive when she did what she did. <laughs> right. So for me, it's contemporary history. Right, right. And to be able to honor her and then to reflect on all the changes in society, uh, I'm here really to talk about the women's movement uh, right, and the suffrage right. movement and how that was a, a, a template for the civil rights movement, right. really. And, you know, we tend to recognize a handful of very strong, prominent personalities, but um, these historical events are made because but a lot of people, a lot of people do the right thing. Right, right. <laughs> Even right. though they're not recognized for it the way right. Rosa Parks is, and Rosa and Parks deserves every bit of it. <laughs> and and uh, in a way, you know, what what Rosa Parks did was phenomenal because she was an African American standing up against segregation. But it was also remarkable because she was a woman, and at that time. Uh, right. That was an unusual, an unusual role. For right. Although we've since learned that uh, the NAACP that brought the suit, uh, they were waiting. They wanted just the right person who could be broadly sympathetic. Right. And uh, you know, they presented her as a, a, a hardworking woman who was just tired after a, a long day. Right. Uh, <laughs> there was much more strength to her personality. Uh, I think <laughs> that's was, right. That, evident at the time and we've learned more about that and right. so you know when you want to get the attention of a nation you know you try to pick the most <laughs> compelling person that you can to put right. a face on the movement and, and she inspired uh, an entire movement it's really quite extraordinary right uh, and, and you talked to, you're talking about that tie between the suffrage uh, the, the uh, movement for women's suffrage right. and the civil rights movement was Rosa Parks also part of that? Uh, did she come directly out of uh, that, that women's movement? Oh, I don't think anybody is really conscious of it. But yeah. when you look at the uh, suffrage movement, it really began in 1848, and women didn't get the vote until 1920. Until 1920, so sure. So it was a pretty long haul. Yes. But the, uh, the tactics that they used, um, mass organizing, uh, the marketing of their story are all things that influence subsequent movements, including what I call the modern women's movement of the 1970s, uh -huh. which really opened the door for me to have a career. Uh, uh, right, right. Uh, I'm wondering, you, you said that you were alive when uh, when Rosa Parks uh, s right. refused to, to, to give up her seat on a, on a bus. Uh, it's 2013. We've had an African-American man win two presidential elections. Uh, is that? I think that's an example of the kind of American exceptionalism. Really, there's no other country on the planet where you can mark that kind of progress oh. over that kind of time. Oh, I agree. And sometimes when I stop and think about it, I think I must have lived too long because <laughs> I've, I've lived into I've a seen. future I couldn't have imagined. Right, right. Uh, yeah. But but what are the what are the things that sort of are still out there that stand in the way of that that sort of goal of well, I think this last election uh, taught us that rights that have been granted can be taken away. And, yes. And the attempts that we saw in various places at really what were voter suppression seemed right out of the Jim Crow era. Yeah. And then comments that were made about women's health yes. uh, took us really back. Really remarkable. Yeah, uh, yes. Took us back to an earlier time, too. And I think uh, the, the perpetrators behind those two forces uh, what happened to them is they ignited the opposition. And right. uh, we saw women turn out, we saw African Americans turn out in greater numbers than people sure. anticipated. And we really saw the, the president put together a coalition of voters that, that I think is uh, sort of a template for the future in terms of where the country is headed. I mean, right. uh, the, the overtures he's made to uh, the gay and lesbian community, 
Uh, that's a very solidly democratic right. base now. I mean, he's sort of looking at where is the country going, and this is probably right. where leadership yeah. needs to happen. Yeah, th th this is the new America. Right. And it's uh, changed under our eyes, uh, you know, demographically and just in every other way. And when you look at the gay rights movement, uh -huh. um, the president made a reference to that in his inaugural speech, but just in, it used to be, in the not too distant past, a wedge issue right. that Republicans used against Democrats, and now Republicans are scrambling to figure out how to get on the right side of these on issues. On the right side of these issues. And sure. uh, they're, they're, they're very divided because they still have a large segment of their party that want to recapture a past that really can't be reclaimed. Right. So uh, this is now being called the National Day of Courage, and it'll be that National Day of Courage mm -hmm. every year from year forth. Uh, obviously, uh, it's very obvious what courage meant to Rosa Parks. What do you right. think it means to someone like you or me uh, in 2013? Oh, what does it mean to me? It means the courage to, you know, keep on doing my job in a, in a field of journalism. <laughs> That's yeah, well, I can relate to that. That's right. <laughs> Every day it changes, right? <laughs> right, you got it. <laughs> That's right. Very important, though, that right. we be able to... to behave as the fourth estate as the Constitution that, really uh, laid that's out. That's right, and to spend enough time reporting the stories that are really meaningful yes. and not get too carried away by the headline of the moment, uh, which is the latest, you know, Kardashian episode. <laughs> <Right>. That's <laughs> you right. Know, we all love to read that stuff, yeah. but um, we have to remember to keep doing important. the things that endure. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, really important story here today. Thank right. you for being here. Thank with you us. for having me.